In 1696, a Swiss mathematician Johann Bernoulli wrote a letter to challenge many renowned mathematicians and philosophers at the time with a simple math question. The question was this: What's the path that a ball can take from the top of Eiffel Tower to another point on the ground, with the only force being gravity? Even the greatest took months to answer, and only four of them answered correctly. One of them solved it overnight and replied anonymously to Bernoulli. He knew whose answer it was from, and he famously said, "I recognize the lion by his claw." The person was Sir Isaac Newton. The question was to test if they knew about cycloid. Cycloid can be found from any wheels. It is a curve one point draws when the wheel is moving. Bernoulli was aware of this curve because years before him, a mathematician named Wilbord Snellius found that lights travel in the shortest distance possible through a camera lens or through water. Bernoulli applied the Snell's law many times to find the fastest distance from one point to another. What calculus does best is to find the maximum or minimum. Rene Descartes, a philosopher who said, "I think, therefore I am," contributes a lot to this. He was the one who invented the system that used two numbers to describe a location of a point. A combination of these points at different times can describe a line or a curve. Cartesian system also brought us the concept of instantaneous rate of change. Suppose a car went 60 miles per hour. It means that the average speed, total distance divided by total time, was 60. However, to calculate the speed at a certain point, we narrow down the gap between two reference points infinitesimally. What calculus does best is to find the maximum or a minimum. It can maximize the volume and minimize the surface area, like aluminum cans. It can calculate the minimum amount of concrete used to withstand a reservoir. It can be used to analyze the movement of money. It can also draw a topological map of half dome. And can find the steepest cliff to climb. It can also calculate the minimum amount of boat polish you need to apply on your boats. Even in our houses, calculus helps us not to get our toilets clogged. Without calculus, we wouldn't be able to fully understand how electricity behaves. Thanks to calculus, we now know the exact amount of fuel a rocket needs for launching. Now we live in a world where space exploration is a reality, and these are just fractions of what calculus can do for us.